In this show, you can join in the action from home. Download the Poker Play Along app from your app provider. How much can I bet now? 19 will be fine? So you want me to call, right? No, I want you to pass. Bubble, can I call a friend for that one? I could have done it like the whole half an hour. Yeah, you could have done it like since day one too. That doesn't time. change anything. Yeah, that changed a lot. And we do have an all-in call on table number one. Players are about to arrive here at the Grand Connaught Rooms and take their seats ahead of this salient moment. What does salient mean? Never mind. Drama! Short stacks be shoving and big stacks be bullying. There is plenty of excitement with the top 95 players all making the money. Well, 32 will miss out on a min cash, and it probably won't be long before players start walking back down these steps with pretty glum faces. Can you blame them? It's been raining for like nine days straight. It's bubble day here at the PokerStars.com EPT London main event. 675 runners started this 4K tournament. Now it's down to 127. Just. Seems they only really know when you finally done hop to my city. So I'm gonna make them stop when they see me. Go child, this a red light, I'm in your home. Yeah, we screwed them with the flow. Today, no, today, no. Yeah, we screwed them with the flow. Today, no. More than a quarter of the remaining players are from the UK, looking to make some money on home soil. Obviously, we're coming very close to the bubbles, so you can make usually a bit of money there once you've got a decent stack. Got a bit of a stack, so hopefully we can grind it out and, and get through to the cash. I think we're getting close to the bubble now, so hopefully try and take advantage of that too. Last time, our online qualifier pick, Yusel Emenoglu, had his aces cracked. I told you, it doesn't come. And was eliminated shortly after. I enjoyed it, I loved it, I've had the taste now, I mean, I know I can play. Team Pro Theo Jorgensen looked to steal the show at the feature table, eliminating the poker sensation Dan Coleman. Can't believe you couldn't get out of that hand. <laughs> but later, he busted out to chip leader Raffaele Sorrentino. See you later. Meanwhile, Jake Cody spun up his stack at the secondary feature table, putting him in good stead to make the money. The Triple Crown winner will take his seat on the main stage today with the home crowd behind him. Being in England, everyone's rooting for us to do well. People want a British guy to win. Joining Jake at the table is old school veteran Willie Tan, who hasn't cashed in an EPT since season three. When I first played my EPT, I think it was in I can't remember where it is, come years ago, a long time ago. It's a very prestigious event. Everybody wants to win one, is it? Completing this trinity of Brits and taking her seat at the secondary feature table is EPT6 San Remo champ, Liv Bury. The atmosphere here in London is brilliant. It'd be so sick to obviously win on my home turf. Bubble day in the EPT London main event. Hey, Johnny Laden. Love to tell you where your seat is, but I'm sorry, John, I don't remember. Just kidding, it's at the secondary feature table. Benny Spindler won London season eight, which is ironically the last time we saw Doyle Brunson here. Thanks a lot, Benny. Classy, Fatima. Elkie's really short. Would hate to see him go out on the bubble. And there's his buddy, Eugene Kachalov. 
If you don't make the pounds, it definitely sucks a ton. So here's the lineup on the main stage. Two team pros, including Jake Cody, old school UK veteran Willie Tan, big stack Jonas Lauch, and short stack Kevin Killeen, who has a lot of work to do if he's going to make the money. I don't want to say Willie Tan's old, but that's him sending a text message. The man's a legend. Old school, new school. I'm worried. You got a number one from Poker Stars there, number two from number one from Poker Stars all there. Nah. Christ. <laughs> all you need to remember is one of them play no hands, one of them play every hand. So that's all you need to know. Hey, I can let you guess. Huh? <laughs> nah. And also he plays at home, very difficult to play away, you know, he's in London. How can you lose? Oh, I see. Yeah, the Jack <laughs> Hoodie there, huh? Home court advantage. The best. He's the best, man. He's my hero, actually. <laughs> You're my hero too, Willie. <laughs> Willie Tan, hero, legend, question. Blinds right now are 1,500, 3,000 with a 400 ante. And that is an early position limp from Jonas Lauch. Limp in here is kind of like making pasta in the microwave. You can do it, but it's not recommended. Pocket sixes for Willie. You're the first limper I've seen. <laughs> and I can't make it out. That surprised me. Huh? That surprises me. What's Willie gonna do here? The old guy is criticizing the young guy for being a limper. It's like I'm watching one of those terrible 80s body switching movies. There's dead money and, and you don't want it. Still can't win it. It's like vice versa. Willie just calls as well. They're so happy, they can see the flop. Look, look. Eugene completes from the small. And Jake checks his option. Do you put the... I want to play with them. You scare them or not? They won't never. Four way to the flop. So a pair of jacks for Kachilov and Lauch. Cody has a gut shot. Action check to Willie Tan. Willie should probably not bet this. This flop smashes the ranges like Kirk Cameron smashes up Dudley Moore's car and like father like son. I don't know if that actually happens in that movie. Whew. 4 1. He bets. 4,100. Gets Eugene to fold a better hand. I imagine Jake is going to follow. He folds as well. Don't tell me you never race with the king or the jack. What is it called? Two fives? Nope. Just another hand he's not folding. Lauk calls. The turn card is the four of clubs. Lauk is now a 95% favorite. The board doesn't really get any worse for sixes, though. Lauk has checked. I imagine Willie's going to check behind now. No need for the change up. Sure enough, river for free, it's the seven of diamonds. Do you remember the change up? That was the one with Ryan Reynolds. Check again. Where are you from? Germany. You know it's candy, yeah? At least. No, no. <laughs> oh, they're so fierce, huh? Yeah, check, man. Yeah. Check. I got it. Check. Oh, I see. So Lauch wins the hand. Meanwhile, Eugene Kachilov is being moved to one of the outer tables. Kenny Navin would raise, I guess, this hand. I'm not. Lauk extends his chip lead at this table. So glad Eugene's just being moved. I thought he got bluffed by Willie Tan, so he's quitting the game forever. Well, out in the field, EPT7 London champ David Van Plew has just eliminated Jacek Ladny. David's won London, but he's also bubbled London. He's below average now, so he's by no means a lock to make it. Well, another former EPT London winner is in action. Benny Spindler has gone to the river against fellow German Sebastian Pauli. He's a nice boy. Pauli has checked. Benny bets, as he's fond of doing. Half pot, and with almost no information, I'm just going to go ahead and say this feels valuey to me. 
Howley calls. Spindler. Tables kings. Nailed it. I was seriously just guessing, though. Pally, too, from the looks of things. Whoops. Drink coffee. Pretend not to tilt. Benny Spindler, an above-average stack. And despite losing that pot, Sebastian Pauli is still in the top 10, as is EPT6 Grand Final champion Nicola Schwiti, still on top, the start of day chip leader Raffaele Sorrentino. Over to the secondary feature table, where Johnny Lodden is deciding whether to see bet. His opponent, Christopher Edberg, has flopped trips. Are you sure his name just isn't Edberg? That makes more sense. Anyway, he's got a lock on the hand. Lodden bets 5,000. And he is letting Johnny do what Johnny does. Edberg calls. The turn card is the five of spades. So Lodden picks up a flush draw. Edberg checks a second time. And Johnny will take the free card if he thinks Edberg is going to have an ace a lot. He does check. And he gets there on the river. This is the worst thing to happen to a Berg since the Titanic. Edberg might bet here, or he might check, hoping Johnny will bluff at it. Only thing is, Johnny ain't gonna be bluffing. Edberg does check. Action on Lodden. I think Johnny bets here almost always, and he's likely to bet pretty big too, because he'll know Edberg won't be able to fold an ace. There's nearly 28k in the pot. Johnny bets 15,500. Edberg counts out the call and makes the call. What'd I tell ya? Edberg shows the ace. He just had to show it. And Johnny Ludden, up to 309k. Should've messed it there. <laughs> this guy, stories. And Edberg looks like he was genuinely hit across the face. So 27 eliminations to go until we make the money. Got this beautiful girl on my side today. Thank you. He was talking about the dealer. Burn. Yeah, mm, very sweet. I was sitting next to Bottom me up. Since we're in London and James Bond's like a legit national hero here, maybe we should go see all the James Bond movie locations. Well, the thing is, Joe, even though James Bond is synonymous with the UK, they don't really showcase London as a location in the movies all that much. The reason being, James Bond works for MI6, not MI5. So rather than working in the UK, he's generally deployed overseas. Why did I even do this? That said, there have been a few times when he's been in London. If you think about Octopussy, 1983, when he has to go to Sotheby's. And more recently, in The World Is Not Enough, 1999, and Skyfall, 2012. The United Kingdom has produced more winners on the Pokestars.com EPT than any other nation. Fifteen champions originated from its shores, and at the Grand Connaught Rooms in London, the Brits are looking to cement their dominance of the tour. There's no friends on the table, any English on after everyone's chips. <laughs> Back to back finals will be lovely. The last couple of years I haven't played at all. Did a bit rusty, making lots of mistakes. It's really nice seeing a bunch of old faces around, you know, like Willie Tan, a bunch of people I just haven't seen for years. Yeah, I'm obviously rooting for an English person to win it if I don't win it myself. Two Brits in this hand, John Gale and Kamal Chararia. The third player is chip leader Raffaele Sorrentino. He bets the flop, 9,700. Love Kamal Chararia, he's my new favorite player. He check raises to 21,000, gets a fold from Gale, Raffaele's getting better than four to one. What? He calls. So heads up to the turn, which is another five pairing the board. Chiraria checks. Sorrentino checks behind. Double paired board now. A check from Chiraria. And the chip leader. Chiraria with a full house. Ah, oh, he was clicking buttons on the flop. That's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
crazy game. I think he thought he had queens. So as we approach the bubble, there's been an all-in and a call at the feature table. Kevin Killeen at risk with ace five, racing against Ilan Bouginard's pocket threes. And the flop has a three on it. Well, that's not gonna be good for business. That hat, though. Bouginard, now a 94% favorite. Interesting turn card. Killeen goes from 6% equity to 23%. He can double up with a diamond or deuce on the river. It's a diamond! I'm back. Like you were never gone. Hey, how do we know he's wearing a monster hat on his head? Maybe that monster is wearing a human being chin strap. Think about that. I'd rather not. How many of those hats do you have? I saw a green one. I have heaps of them, yeah. Do you, do you make them? Your friend no, make them? No, just I buy them when I'm in different places in the world and I see them, I just get them. My friends actually bought me this one when I FT'd uh, UKBT Dublin. They made me wear it on the final table. So. Yeah, who's making you wear it now? Kevin went on to win that event in Dublin for nearly 90,000 euros. By the way, I think I missed something. Did Eugene got moved or he busted? Moved. I got moved, okay. Yeah. Right. I can't be watching hands, I'm not playing. Probably not the wisest decision. Maybe he'd been paying attention, he would have known Killeen was going to make a flush there. Another chance to play along at home soon as Jonas Lauk raises under the gun plus one with King Jack suited. He's up all night to get Lauki. We're going to have some fun with that name, I think. King Queen for Bushna. He calls in position. 10 7 off for Jake Cody in the big blind. He calls as well. Yeah, sure. Three-way to the flop. And it's top pair for Jake. He's going to check to the razor usually. That's what he does. And Lauk's usually going to continue. Which he does for 12,000. I don't know that it's going to get any folds, though. Bouchenard has a gut shot. He calls. Jake has the best hand right now. He also calls. And yes, that is the appropriate face. The turn card is the five of clubs. Changes nothing. Jake checks a second time. Still checking to the bed or. Wow, set to fire again. I love a double barrel here. 35,000. Gets a fold from Bouchner. What does Jake do? He's got top pair. He's got a call. But he knows if he's facing a value hand, he's probably going to face another bet on the river. And if he's against a bluff, he's definitely facing another bet on the river. Jake Cody folds the best hand. Lauk be a lady. Lauk chips up to 336k. I feel like there's no way you had it there. Hmm? No way you had it there. Ding! 114 players remaining, 19 away from the money. Jonas Lauk continuing to boss the feature table. He's now moved into the top 10. Now, he is an online qualifier. Remember, Joe, our qualifier pick was eliminated on day two. Of course, satellites are for everyone. Even previous EPT champions use them to enter events. And so do other previous EPT champions. Well, still in the tournament are two of our previous qualifiers. Bram Henrates is back for more. As is Leo McLean, who made the final table of this event last year. That was a sick run. Well, here's an online qualifier, Zahi Harel from Israel. In a hand against Salman Bebahani. Bebahani betting 15,000 on the river. Zahi Harel. This looks like a check race, race. to 43,000. That hair, though. I really think the worst hand Harrell can have here is King-10. Clubs are more likely. Bebahani calls. Harrell shows Jack-10 of clubs. Boom, clubs. I wonder what Bebahani had. Nice. This amateur now playing more than 208,000 as the bubble Looms. We're well, back at the main feature table. 
Jake Cody is raised under the gun. He's been called by Willie Tan, and action is now on Rainer Kemper from Germany. Getting some pretty sweet pot odds. Huh. He calls. Yep, yeah, just roll those right in there. That's the way. Three way to the flop. And that's a full house for Willie Tan. Nah, that woke him up. Kemper flops a no good flush draw. He checks. To the razor. No C bet from Jake. Willie checks as well. Queen of Diamonds on the turn. I like Willie's check back on the flop. It's not likely anyone has an overpair, so letting someone catch up is fine. Willie now has a lock on the hand. No bet from Kemper or Cody. Willie bet. That's both a question and a command. 6,500. Probably could have bet a little bigger. Either one of these jokers has got something or he doesn't. Cool. Kemper is in. Cody is out. Heads up to the river. And that's bad news for Kemper. He's just made his flush. Super bad news. Speaking of which, what's this guy's deal? What's with his hat? He's dressed like he just got back from vacation in 1992. Looks like he's going to value bet with the worst hand. Twenty-eight thousand. And Willie's got a raise here. He just has to remember that he's kind of an older dude, so he's probably getting paid off less often than a twenty-three-year-old's credit card. Willie raises to ninety-six thousand. How's Kemper gonna respond? He faults. Easy to fall to a guy with an image like Willie's. Go up, Willie. Show the straight flush. Show the ball. Show sure. straight flush. Are you mad, or? <laughs> straight flush. Any flush is good enough. Ah, he still got it. Great to have Willie Tan back on the tour. First play my EPT, I think it was in a couple of years ago, a long time ago. I don't think they had so many players like now. I think I think the the number of players have increased tremendously. Terms they use these days, I sometimes I don't even understand. I mean, seriously, I mean, well, they can't make it out. And they give a term like hijack and the under the gun and I mean, during my time we never use such terms. Eh? You have many, I think, rocket science playing poker. The main thing I think is aggression, and I, you could adjust to the, the to the aggression of these youngsters. They are oh, very aggressive. You're the first limper I've seen. The secret to success in poker is to keep these five P's in mind: position, patience, perseverance, psychology, and a lot of practice. P. So those are the five P's. You must be more careful with your chips then, you see. Everybody wants to cash, but staying alive till you get into the money, that's what everybody does, you see. At first I was surprised Willie could remember all five Ps, but then I was just surprised psychology doesn't start with an S. Earlier we lost Eugene Kachalov. Now Jake Cody has been reassigned to one of the outer tables. Fatima has been moved to our secondary feature table. She's in a hand against Marco Neumann. See bet, see bet. 8,500. Fatima is a four to one favorite here with Jax. She calls. The turn card is another seven. Fatima still ahead. Neumann now checks behind. Ace on the river. Could be a scare card for Fatima. She checks to Neumann a third time. Probably trying to catch bluffs. I actually don't like betting king high here. Sometimes it'll have showdown value, and everybody knows you're going to try to rep the ace, so tons of better hands aren't folding. He makes it 14,500. Fatima thinking carefully about this one. She's played this very passively. She probably has to call. She does call. 
And she does win. What a slow play. Slow call, right? Passive for sure, like a lady poker Gandhi. Well, the eliminations keep coming. EPT 10 Deauville finalist Ollie Price is out. The price is wrong. As is a guy who final tabled this event last year, Jan Olev Shavik, the Balrog. He shall not pass. We are now nine away from the bubble. You could qualify for a European Poker Tour main event for a fraction of the buy-in at PokerStars.com. Brosnan is bouncing around on a set inside a studio because they hadn't. Welcome back to the PokerStars.com EPT London main event, where players are exercising caution as the bubble draws near. I mean, cash is not meaningless at all. Everyone wants the cash, even the big names. Uh, for me personally, I don't want to make the money with two blinds. The most important thing is to win the tournament. I mean, you mustn't be too aggressive, but they're alive to get into the money on day three. Do whatever it takes. It's almost £8,000. It's a lot of money. £8,000 of what? American money. Oh. Well, John Gale was super short. He's now all in. And there's action on the side between Jareth East and Kamal Chararia. East. Bet's big on the river. Does he have it, or is he trying to steal the side pot? I think he has it. His hands were shaking big time. Terraria folds. And East had it. John Gale is out. Hashtag death by quads. Hashtag no filter. 101 remain. 95 make the money. 95 make the money. <laughs> So action's been folded round to the blinds. Lout raises. Whew. And let's play this hand against Willie Tan. I never passed one thing, all right? So, huh? 75. 75, sorry. We're playing from Lauk's perspective. We are sweating with Jonas. Hey, maybe if we just tank for a long time, he'll fall asleep. Jack four deuce. Lout checks. Yeah, we got clubs in that, huh? He's usually not going to have two clubs when he does that. 75. Yeah. 7,500 from Willie. It's the same as our preflop raise. I think we can peel once. Well, out calls with his pair of threes. Another jack on the turn. Now it's safer to say Willie probably doesn't have one. 85. He's betting again. 8,500. Still such a small bet relative to the size of this pot. And I really hope he's not tease, tease, bombing us. Lout calls again. Ah, and last time I saw him push chips in like that, he had nothing. The river card is a nine. Lout checks for a third time. Willie! Really? How much are you going to call for? Sorry? How much are you going to call for? It's on you. 21. Is that fair? Lauk facing a bet of 21,000. Well, that is certainly a lot bigger than the previous bets. This is what I was afraid of. Feels a lot like a jack. So you want me to call, right? No, I want you to pass. <laughs> you show me when I fall? Yeah, I show you. Uh, okay, I have a pair. You have a pair? No. Yeah. Which one do you want to see? Oh, you said you show me. Oh, take it, huh? Can I take both? Take both, take okay. both. I don't mind. Willie had 8 6 for an air ball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the 6th <laughs> Wrecked. <laughs> we just got bluffed by crazy old man strength. Willie's on course to make the money. A min cash is worth 7,750 quid, with nearly half a million up top. 
at the secondary feature table. It's Lodden versus Bury. Live three bet pre and continued flop. She now checks the turn. Live with the best hand. But Johnny's betting. 32,500. How does Liv respond? Johnny's making a fairly weak bluff here, but Liv's got one of the few better hands that could fold to this. Liv lays it down. And that's the best, worst hand Liv could have had there. I think that makes sense. Pause it if you need to figure it out. Johnny Lodden has more than double the tournament average. Well, remember, Jake Cody got moved out into the field. Well, he's in a hand at one of the outer tables against Jan Pino and Zahi Harrell. The flop is 10-4-3 with two clubs. Action's been checked to Harrell. Looks like he's betting. 26,000. Pino folds. How much is that? Jake raised under the gun and then didn't continue. He may be looking to call at least one street here. Jake does call. Heads up to the turn. Nine of spades. Jake checks a second time. Zahi Harrell checks behind. Eight of clubs on the river. Jake's played this very passively so far. Check. He checks. Zahi checks. And tables. Eight, nine for two pair. Must have thought Jake's gonna have a flush draw there too often and he can't value bet against that. He could be right. <laughs> oh, I'm scared of Jake Cody. Yeah, great. Well played. Well, do they have to show that one on the TV? <laughs> I think it's time to brand this guy our online qualifier. Flame on. My name is uh, Zahi Arel. I'm 31 from Israel. I work as a finance analyst, I play poker as a hobby. My parents, they both work in the, in the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I have two smaller brothers. Their work meant that we traveled a lot, so those were kind of uh, interesting experiences for me and my brothers. I mean, my parents, they were really uh, excited. I'm sure my, my dad was really excited, just really hoping I could cash at least. My mom was more excited just for me being on TV. I love the game, I, I read a lot about it, I watch all the, all the live streams, all the episodes of the EPT. I saw a lot of familiar faces here, which was really cool. It was the first time to me, I played with Jay Cody a little bit. Kind of weird, you, you used to see all these guys on TV and now they're sitting with you at the table and then you're trying to bluff them out of pods, they're trying to bluff you out of pods. Pretty surreal experience. Zahi Harrell is more like the online Koala Smiler, although he's not smiling now, thank you. Well, there's been another elimination. Kamal Terraria is out. Good luck, guys. He ran ace-jack into Liviu Ignat's aces. Romania of year. And more all-in action across the room. Jens Lackermeyer could be heading to the exit. Oh, I thought it was Lakemeyer. <laughs> He's out. So we're down to 97. We are one away from the bubble. One away from hand-for-hand -hand play. Let's check in on some of the tournament short stacks. Among the players with not many chips right now are Eugene Kachalov. Shorter than the kitchen counters at Warwick Davis's house. Elke. Shorter than the wait at a sushi restaurant in Kabul. Pierre Chevalier. Shorter than when Goodfellas is edited for television. And Mateusz Bikowski. Of all the times I've played, I've never seen someone like 
with this little stack ever bubble. I've never seen that guy bubble ever. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> it's always been somewhere else. Yeah. So I think you uh, going to be lucky. I'm rooting for you. I appreciate Because you've worked <laughs> so hard. Yeah. You've worked so hard. <laughs> yeah. You've put up with all that bad energy, like being pointing at you, and you've, you've gone through the emotions. You deserve it. Sam Trick, it's all right. Well, plenty of players in the danger zone right now. Danger zone! Including Mikhail Petrov with 11 big blinds. The clock has been called on Petrov, and he has been accused of stalling. Yeah, but there, there is a difference if I'm getting in the money with the, like, fold, fold equity. With, my, with the stack that has fold equity and with the stack that don't. That's a big difference. Yeah, like a quarter. They're gonna call clock. Yeah, yeah, I'm not arguing. I'm just answering. No, he said that if you're wondering that I'm getting in the money anyway, but that's ridiculous. Like, when it gets like in three hands, my, my button, I don't want it to fold like ace ten, which I have to do, like hand for hand. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Don't even say you wouldn't act like a jerk for 8,000 pounds. Most of you do it for free. What do you think of McCall's strategy? Take your tweets, EPT. So in summary, I don't really consider London to be a Bond location, but we can talk about the Bahamas, because Bond came here three times, although Never Say Never Again, 1983, not part of the official Bond canon unlike Thunderball, 1965, and Casino Royale, 2006. In fact, if we walk along this beach, we'll come to the one and only Ocean Club, where they shot one of the poker games in Casino Royale. We're almost in the money at the Pokestars.com EPT London main event, just one away from the bubble. And it seems Mikhail Petrov is still stalling at one of our outer tables. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, one, zero. I start smiling all when, when you start arguing like the way, like no, what you, are you doing, man? You understand no, what no, I'm doing. No, you're wrong. Yeah. You were doing it before. I understand everybody. Before, everybody before understands. Understand. Yeah. I, oh, I, start, I start doing it only when just 97 people. Right. I never Got done it. I never done it like 20 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. I could have done it like the whole half an hour. Yeah, you could have done it like since day 10, one too. It doesn't 10. change anything. But that, that changed a lot. But. Well, we're getting closer to the bubble. Well, in this week's edition of EPT 101, we discuss everything you need to know about the bubble in tournament mechanics. The money bubble. That's the very last person's going home with zero, and the very next person's going home with that min cash. We're here at EPT London this season. We pay 95 players. Uh, our 96th player would be the bubble, so the player who came out in the 96th position. So at 96 players, we will go hand for hand. So all the dealers finish dealing the hand that they were on, and every table deals just one hand. The reason we do that is to have control of which players have been eliminated. Because obviously if you have 10, 15, 20 tables, you can eliminate more than one player at any time. And also during this process, a lot of players can slow down their play because they just want to wait for people to bust on the other tables. We had a Russian guy on the table. We had 97, 98 players, so close to the bottom. And he was stolen time every hand. I explained to him, he has now one minute, then it's a dead hand, and he did it every time. When we get to 96 players, if we have any all-in and a call, that's basically if someone is at risk from being eliminated, that table has to stop and wait for every other hand to finish. And the reason we do that is because if we did lose a player from that table, it can affect how other players play on the other tables. The bubble is one of my absolute favorite parts of the tournament. You hear an all-in, the media swarms, you know, it's, it's just such a feeling to be in a tournament at the money bubble. Ah, <laughs> Johnson. So we're down to 97 players, two away from the money, one away from the dreaded bubble. Oh man, I hate bubbling. I assume I've never made it to dinner break. So Yelen Bouchonard has raised it up with King Do suited. It's a little loosey goosey. Action folded around to Willie Tan in the big blind. I keep on defending my blind and I keep on giving you. 10 it's okay if you fold. I mean, I'll take it. I can't fold. <laughs> I'm here to play. 
Yeah, but I'm scared you hit some trips and take all my chips or something. Willie defends with 6-3 suited. Second pair for Bougenard on the flop. What do you think? I'm going to bet this flop or not? Well, of course you're going to bet. <laughs> what are you going to do? Or should I bet it for you? <laughs> Maybe you should. All right, OK, then. Nah, bad idea. 13, then, all right? I bet it for 13. you. Really Told you it's bad idea. Best on a call. It's not always a bad idea. I don't mind the random stab. Bougenard has a lock on the hand. I check that. Me too. What? Me too. I check, I check. You bet for me, so it's oh, enough. Oh, I see. And Bougenot improves to trips on the river. Decision on Willie Tan. Betting here would be a bad idea. When you call on the flop, your opponent almost has an ace or a king, and they're never folding either one at this point. A bet here would be a worse idea than dating a girl who has the same first name as a city. How much can I bet now? Hey, that's up to you, my friend. For you to call. 19 will be fine. 19. 19. Will he bet? What about 44? That's a race. Ah, this should be good. It's too much. Will he fault? Show sure this. You can pick one. I can actually show this. Okay. Question is the second one. <laughs> That's the real question. Could be King do so hard. King of hard not on the board. Surprisingly honest. Well, we've got three-way action at the secondary feature table. Chip leader Raffaele Sorrentino has flopped a full house. Johnny Loven has paired his ace. And Marco Neumann has a total bagolino. Yeah, well, at least it's nice to know you have literally no shot of winning this hand, even when you can't see the whole cards. Action gets checked around. An eight on the turn. I like Johnny Loven's check back for pot control. Neumann now bets 12,500. Only way he's ever going to win this pause by betting, except also no. Sorrentino calls. And Loden calls as well. A four on the river. Neumann Rivers a straight flush. Draw. He slows down, he checks. Time for Sorrentino to take it on down to Value Town. 66 and a half thousand in the middle. Great school system in Value Town, by the way. Taxes are worth it. This is a bet of 37 and a half thousand. This is a really gross spot for Johnny, especially because Marco could also have him beat behind him. Johnny considering his options. And he calls. I don't think he expects to be winning there every time. Neumann folds. Sorrentino tables a winner. Good. That's how you play, huh? Just nuts. I had a hope when he showed his ace. <laughs> I was sure I was winning. You had a 10? Sorrentino extends his chip lead. Meanwhile, the floor staff are losing patience with Mikhail Petrov. And they've decided to limit his thinking time. Yeah, yeah, really. If I will get next ten, like <laughs> ace ten off, I can still think without penalty and fold, right? Because ace ten off is a legitimate. Yeah. No, I talked to the tournament director mm -hmm. because he did it on purpose. Every hand you have 15 seconds. That's it okay. doesn't matter what you have. Okay. Every hand, okay, okay. 15 seconds. 15 seconds from okay. the point that he folds. Do I stay here? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can see. And then it's a dead hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now you're gonna pick up. Like but I can take 15 five. seconds with any hand. 50, 15 seconds. With, one five. with any hand. Any hand. Perfect. Those 15 seconds are gonna be his 15 minutes of fame. Back at the main feature table. Actions on Kevin Colleen, who doubled up earlier on. He's got queens. Queens on the bubble. What's she gonna do? Some folks are just gonna fold this. Some folks are gonna stall with it too, Petrov. Hold it. Colleen shoves. Fold it around to Jonas Lauch, who's got pocket fives. He faults. Understandable. It's now on Bujnar in the big blind. Uh, seven handed, right? So sick. He's got eight. Can I call a friend for that one? No, <laughs> I really can't. What's he going to do here? 
on the bubble cleans open jamming range is going to be narrower than that cave in 127 hours so calling here would be akin to cutting your own arm off that's a visual image i really didn't need in my head i've never even seen the movie to be honest overrated just like pocket eights boosh enough faults Colleen chips up. That's a big show and bubble. I don't know if I need to call. Meanwhile, there is an all-in and a call at Mikhail Petrov's table. Jens Obain at risk with Jax. Wait, wait. Couple more cards. Mark Andre Ladusa way ahead with Kings. Obain's out. Good luck. Thank you. Guys. Attention, here's the event. Please make stand your own and stop dealing. <laughs> How would you feel about that? Uh, I bet. I'm not so bad. I'm so no, happy. No. <laughs> Honest. So we're on the bubble. We will be going hand for hand next, but we're hearing there's an all-in and a call at another table. Toby Stone's in position. We lost a player from table number eight, and we do have an all-in call on table number one. Our all-in player is Ignatz against Marco. Once again, Ignatz is our all-in player. Let's see your cards, please. Ignatz has two black eights, eight. two black eights, and Marco has ace queen. Yep. And let's see the flop, please. The flop is jack, six, and a two. Eight holding. And the turn, please. The turn is a four. Six outs for Kaza. And the final card, please. The final card's an ace. Livio Ignat gets rivered. He bubbles. No need for hand-for-hand -for -hand play. We're down to 95. Congratulations, players. You've all cashed in EPT London. Congratulations. Online qualifier. More like online cashifier. Hey-o. Yeah, that was it. Ace on, ace on river. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Will he cash? Yes, he will. Mikhail Petrov can stop stalling now. He's cashed. <laughs> Livio Ignat leaves with nothing. Don't they know what year it is? The remaining 95 are all locked up. 7,750 quid. Raffaele Sorrentino remains on top. The man who burst the bubble sits in second. But perhaps the happiest man in the room right now is Mikhail Petrov. Every time on the bubble, like short stacks are trying to take the time. Some, some, somebody doing it uh, openly. I mean, basically, more money is better than less money. And it works, I think, in every field. Next time, it's all about survival, as players look to make day four. Ooh. Ooh. I'm so tilted now. I'm all in. What are you doing now? And our online qualifier looks to make an even deeper run. Now and I'm just going to enjoy it, I already made the money. I'll just play as normal as I can and try to make the final table.